Hello to this APC, and this is part two of my stackable inventory tutorial. So if you haven't seen part one yet, um, click the link that I'm probably going to show on the screen right now, um, and you'll be able to link be linked back to that. So in this tutorial, in the first one, I showed you how to set up set up the inventory, and in this one, I'm going to show you how to add stuff to the inventory and take away stuff. So in order to get started, I'm going to create a group, and I'm going to call it slot and I'm just going to put all these slot objects inside there to create a little bit of organization. There we go. Now I'm going to create another group, and I'm going to call this one Items. And this one we're going to create an object for each of our item sprites. So I'm going to start with object pick, pick, and we're going to give it an index, just like we did the slot. So I'm going to say index equals one. Okay. One thing that's important on the index is if you go to our control event, they have to match, or it'll be in your best interest if they match the index used in the sprite. So I'm just going to copy this over here. So just reference this right here because I'm making a comment right now, so it's not going to fit the code at all. But just reference this right here whenever you set the index of the object. So I put down one because. One is the same as the sprite, the SPR pick. Okay. So, I'm going to create another object. OBJ. Oh, and so on and so on. I'm going to fast forward this. Okay, once you have each of your objects created and each have the uh, correct corresponding index, create another object called OBJ item. This can work very similar to the slot system as, as you can tell we always set the index variables and now we're going to create a parent variable or a parent object which will um, have traits that are will be shared by all the items. So this won't have a sprite because it's not going to be used in the game and we're just going to set the parent of each of these sprites to the obj item. Alright, now we have items taken care of. Let's go into the control object, creation event. And um, we're going to start out with all of them as all of the inventory value slots at zero. So we could just go through and set them all to zero, but I'm gonna use a for loop. What's a loop? A loop is used in programming, you can use it to repeat an um, action over and over again. And a for loop is a different different types there it's a while loop, it's another type, but we're gonna use the for loops. So the way for loop works is at type down four brackets, semicolon, semicolon. So the first one is what, what variables you want to be in the beginning. So I say i equals zero, so I want i equals zero at the beginning. And then I want the loop to continue repeating while i is less than five. And then I want, after at the end of each loop, I want one to be added onto i. So what this will do is, it'll go through whatever I put between these brackets five times, because it'll go, it'll go loop equals zero, it'll go through it, it'll add one, and then I'll go through it again, that's 2, and I'll keep going like that until i equals 5, and this statement here is no longer true. So that's the way it works. In this case, we'll go through it 5 times, one, once for each slot. So we'll say i and v, what slot? i, because it'll go th that we want i to be whatever slot we're on, so it starts at 0 and then goes all the way up to 4, and 0, so what, what i and sprite do we want to be? And the index of that one is 0, and i and v i comma one. What? How much? How many of them do we want? Well, also be zero. So this will set it all to zero and also avoid that we get any glitches of not initializing anything. All right. So now let's go into our object item. The way we're gonna have this set up is we're gonna have the, these items spread out around the whole room, and when we click on them, we want to be added to our our inventory. So when we click on them, so mouse left pressed. Okay, so now we're going to go with the script that um, will add to the inventory. So we're going to create a variable called slot set equal to negative 1. Now, we have slots 0, 1, 2, 3, 3, and 4, so negative 1 doesn't exist. You'll see why I chose to make it one that doesn't exist in a second. Now I'm going to create another for loop. This is going to look exactly the same as the previous one. So it'll go through it five times, once for each slot. And we're going to check, we're going to check whether that individual slot has the object looking for. So, if, for instance, if we're working with the axe, we want to check whether the, this each slot has an axe in it. So, 
we're going to say uh, if if control dot i and v um, i so because that's the lot we're working with zero if it's equal to index because each of our items have an index that matches the sprite so if if the sprite of that slot is equal to our index that then we know that it, it's the same item as us so then slot equals i slot represents which slot we want our um, object to go into so we want to go into the slot that matches our object and then break what break does is use me most of memory con conservation so let's say it's um, on the f we find the slot we need on the first slot then if we put down break it won't go through the other four loops which will just save memory Okay. so now if slot equals negative one we want to do this in other words if it went through this loop and didn't find anything matching meaning we don't have any of it yet we want to create and we want to find an empty spot to put it in so we're going to create another for loop to find the empty spot and it's going to look like this so it's exactly the same. I just noticed I put a 5 there. That needs to be 1. I don't know why I put a 5 there. Then in between here. So now we even check whether the slot's empty. So if control dot v Because remember, 0 was what we are going to to put down if there was no object in there. So if equals 0 means it's empty. So then we want slot to be equal i, or that slot, and then break for the same reason that I said earlier. I'm not sure if these semicolon is necessary, but I guess just to have it from Java. So I just put them there and it won't hurt anything. So then after we found our empty slot, we go into the INV array and slot equals the next. So now since it wasn't since it was an empty one, we want to make sure that um, the item that's now in that slot is equal to the item we have now. Alright, I hope that makes sense. So now what we want to do, this is what we want to happen once we've chosen our slot, and now that's it. So, um, control, IV. We want to add one to the amount that we have in, in this, under that slot. So if there was, if there was zero of it, like there's in this case, like, then we want to add one to become one, and if there was like five or so, like it would be if it, if it, in this case, then it would become six. Plus equals one, sorry. Okay. And now, now that that's all taken care of, it's now been stored into the inventory. We just want to destroy our this object so that we don't have multiple of them in the room. Multiple of them. Physically, I guess. Alright, so now that we've, now we can add them. Guess let's test that out. Go into our room. Let's just select each your item and we'll add a couple of them. I'll probably speed this up. I'm just gonna add a couple of each one. It's not tested out. All right, so here I have all our random objects, and here we have our inventory as zero each one. So if I click on, let's see, that's an axe. It'll we'll move to our first inventory slot, and it'll say one because it's now the one axe. So if, we, if I find another axe it'll choose that inventory slot and it'll become two. So now I can click on other ones. The swords will stack up. And the shovels stack up. And now I have one of each one. And the inventory I click, it'll stack up in the corresponding inventory slot. So that's good. That, that's, that's pretty cool. Now we're going to program one last thing. So if I click on this inventory, I want it to be and add to the room again. So if I click on this one, I want there to be an axe add to this room. I want this to be set one. Before we get into into um, coding the that though, we need to create one more array. This array we're gonna call objects. It'll sort of the same first as sprites did, only it will call up the object instead of sprites. So we don't have a null object, we don't need one, so we're just gonna skip zero and go to one. And make sure it corresponds with with these objects. So one the uh, sprites SPR pick the object needs to be OJ pick. And I'm going to speed this up and I'm going to just create it in the same way we made the sprites. So we're going to go into our slot parent again. So when we click on it, this is what we want to happen. 
if control dot inv um, index comma zero. All right. What this means is if the uh, image or the index of our current slot does not equal zero, meaning that if there's something in this slot, what do we want to do? First off, we want to decrease the number of we want to decrease the number of items in this slot by one because one we're gonna take one out. So con, con, uh, control dot inv index because one indicates the amount that's in the slot. So now we're gonna create a new variable called obj. This can represent which object we're going to add back to the room. And you want to equal whatever the index is that's currently in the inventory slot. So control dot inv r slot zero. So that will show which um, what the index of that one is. Alright. So remember we, we subtract one from there. Let's say the amount of objects in that slot is zero. If if that happens we want to no longer have an object in that slot, we want to be shown as an empty slot. So we're gonna say if global no uh, I keep doing that. If control dot inv index meaning our slot one equals zero, then we want to set the object in the in the slot to zero as well. Uh, control dot inv index zero. Alright so now it's an empty slot. And then last but not least, we're going to create object in our room. So inst instance create. We're just going to make it randomly in the room. So I'm going to say random room width. Random. And then we have our object index right here. So we're going to go into the object array and find the object that fits that index. <coughs> and there we have it. All done. Short perfectly now. I can add um, them all in like I could earlier. You might want to change the max mask of these when you if you do this because it's really hard to click on them. All right, so now I got a little bit of everything in there, and if I click on let's say I click on the shovel, see it decreased down two, and shovels crates around the room. All the, even though I missed, let me see if I can get it this time. There, that shovel just say, it appeared there, and that act just appeared there. So another thing I want to make sure that we test out. Let's see. So the hose, the shovel's there, and the hose there. So if I take these both away and click on the hoe, it should come back to the that slot because that's the furthest left and that works so we know that it's not so it doesn't think that that's a that spot has a, a hoe in it still so um so yeah that's all this this tutorial was really hard to make but it's now I'm, I'm, it's over and i think it it's, it's, it should be helpful to you so it's, it's now off the list and I've got to add arrays to the list because I've been I've, I've, this is my second tutorial that involved arrays and, and both of them I went into multidimensional arrays and I haven't made a basic arrays tutorial yet so I probably should do that. Um, so for your challenge, so your challenge is to combine this tutorial with my Minecraft placing blocks tutorial. You'll be able to select them and place the blocks whatever you want, and it'll and then you can reclaim them. And so that's that's the um, challenge. And also, if you want an, an extra little challenge, is see all these slots in the game Minecraft. There's um, like you see the inventories. They have like um, let's see in the in the chest. What do they have? Like 32, 64 slots, slots something like that. And I'll guarantee you that not going to go through and make a whole bunch of these objects or in, in Java. So if you look in my Guitar Hero tutorial. See, I taught you to use scripts in order to make variations of the same object. So, 
if you could try to combine these, them, it will become far more efficient. And it, you won't really notice it in, in um, when you're playing it, but even though it might be maybe a little bit faster because you're using less memory, but it's um that's just a nice little challenge too. So um that's all for this tutorial. I'll see you guys next time.